To gain a full appreciation of the tourism workforce, we need to step back and take a wider political, economic and social view. In our research, we have called this the macro perspective. Some of these factors defining, impacting and challenging tourism employment include labour markets, tourism supply, industrial relations, unionisation, employment agencies, skills, training and education, workforce research and so on. Let's investigate four macro factors to illustrate the value of tourism employment. Governments are a key player in the policy and planning domain. As Queensland's Minister for Tourism explains, well, one of the pressures that governments face um, in ensuring we have a sustainable tourism workforce is that perception that there aren't long-term sustainable jobs. Governments have many issues to balance in the development of workforce policy. This includes the supply and demand of labour, environmental and economic conditions, mobility, between occupations, organisations, even locations, and meeting skills, training and educational requirements. Governments frequently attempt to manage these factors with active labour market policies. These policies might include government funding for young, un- or underemployed to access subsidised upskilling and training, or for organisations to access incentives to employ certain sectors of the labour market, for example, people with a disability or new migrants, or even supporting destinations to create tourism products and experiences to sustain year-round employment, as Queensland's Minister for Tourism explains. One of the big things that we've seen traditionally in the tourism sector is a lot of seasonality around uh, when people want, it, when they can employ more people or not. We're very much using our events funding and our events calendar to smooth out um, the tourism peaks and troughs so we have more people visiting more often. Our recent research showed that after nearly a decade of little interest from the Australian government in active labour market policies for tourism, between 2009 and 2012, twice as many significant policy documents were prepared and released than in the preceding 10 years. These documents coincided with acute skills and labour shortages in Australian tourism, largely due to competition in the labour market from the booming resources sector. Policies were required to attract more workers to tourism jobs, especially in regional destinations. Focusing now on the regional or destination level, tourism is an industry with an enormous capacity to invigorate and regenerate communities whose main industries have fallen on hard times. We visited Longreach, an outback Queensland town whose economy historically was almost entirely dependent upon sheep and cattle until the drought came. Over the past 20 years, Longreach has developed some iconic Australian tourism products and experiences, such as the Qantas Founders Museum, Stockman's Hall of Fame, and the Kinnan and Co Outback Experience. And for the Longreach community, tourism means jobs. Tourism kept the towns alive, and it, and it really is that simple. There's towns all dotted throughout this area that simply wouldn't still be there had tourists not come. I, go, I employ about 25 people in my business uh, through the season, which is um, sort of April through to October. So in that period of time, we're, we're carrying 20 or 25 wages here. Um, that, that declined very quickly uh, in the summertime when our visitation is not so high. Um, but without that, um, we lose our youth. It's, it, again, it, it becomes part of our culture out here and, and, and part of keeping the bush alive, really. Um, no jobs, no kids, they all go to the city. But the benefits of tourism employment also flow through the town. 
our business here, the Connors Founders Museum, we've got 35 staff. They had to quote us over a million dollars in wages. So a million dollars in wages spend back into our community. But if we look at the attractions, so we attract between 37 and 40,000 visitors a year. It's not just about one attraction, one business. It's a, it's a whole regional effect that we see from uh, investing in new attractions and new experiences. Tourism sustains the local community by providing employment in other sectors. For example, motor mechanics, schools, healthcare and cafes. This also creates opportunities for young people to stay rather than seeking employment in urban centres. So tourism plays a really indicator um, to, to all these western towns um, in keeping our little towns and little uh, communities alive. Tourism via workforce opportunities can do enormous social good. It provides employment possibilities for many sectors of the population and this includes people experiencing some sort of disadvantage. This is largely because the industry offers many entry-level positions. Historically, tourism is well known for recruiting workers from the margins of society. In Australia, for example, Research has shown that successive migrant populations established themselves in the community via hospitality employment. Examples include the colonial Irish as hoteliers, Greek families after World War II in cafes, and more recently refugees from Southeast Asia, who often started family businesses running and supplying restaurants. At its worst, however, tourism exploits disadvantaged populations. It is estimated that up to 50% of the world's slave population works forcibly in the sex industry, many offering services to tourists. On a brighter note, tourism and hospitality employment can provide disadvantaged populations many benefits, entry-level employment, building self-esteem, recovery from trauma, and social mobility. Let's consider some examples. In our research at the University of Queensland, we have explored the relationship between homelessness and employment. Employment is a major factor in people being able to escape homelessness and sustain housing. In interviews with homeless persons, we identified a number of barriers they experienced that excluded them from the workforce. These included not being able to supply potential employers with a fixed address, a lack of transportation, and even not having appropriate clothing to wear for job interviews. As a result of their experiences, many homeless have very negative views of the world of work. We are currently working to evaluate the experiences of homeless persons transitioning to housing who are undergoing skills training that can make them employable not only in subsidised employment but provide them better access to the formal labour market, for example with international hoteliers. Our colleagues' research has also highlighted how frontline tourism and hospitality employment can provide benefits for migrants settling into their new communities. So the hospitality sector also has an important function in migrants' personal lives. Employment in hotels, bars, restaurants and cafes can be a low barrier entry point into the labour market. Migrants working in customer-facing roles in the service sector have unique opportunities to develop. Tourism is often described as an activity that can promote much social, economic and cultural good for those that travel. But tourism employment can also be a powerful force for improving the lives and prospects of many individuals and groups that find themselves at some disadvantage. An often overlooked but significant component of the tourism workforce are volunteers. 
Volunteers are used extensively in the tourism and event sectors. Events, museums, and tourism visitor centers often utilize volunteers in their operations. For example, events like the Olympic Games use over 50,000 volunteers. The event simply would not be sustainable without this free workforce. But what defines a volunteer is contested. Western definitions imply a volunteer works of their own free will, with no monetary incentive. However, volunteering in some countries and contexts involves some compulsion or coercion, for example, through educational or organizational corporate social responsibility programs. Cultural differences in volunteering can also reflect in volunteer participation rates across countries. For example, in Australia, 37% of the adult population volunteered in 2013, whereas only 22% of individuals in South Korea volunteered during the same time. Our ongoing research at the University of Queensland, in partnership with Wakayama University in Japan, suggests that volunteering for earthquake relief is far more common than volunteering for events or tourism organizations. This suggests that the benefits of tourism to economies, communities, youth, and social good can be better promoted to entice more people to volunteer for the many opportunities the industry provides. Volunteers do provide a lot of uh, services that might not otherwise be provided. So the local uh, tourism visitor information centre in a local town, could that be, a f could that be operated by paid staff 20, you know, nine to five every day of the year? So you have these people who are actually coming in and providing a frontline service. At the macro level, the tourism workforce has some obvious, but sometimes critical, profound, and even surprising implications. The tourism workforce stakeholder that often has the most direct control over these implications is at the meso or organizational level. 